Thanks for joining us, Noah. Would you mind introducing yourself to our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Noah Dirksen. I'm a folk songwriter from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I understand that your newest album, America Dreaming, just came out really recently, like last week. So the the album, uh, it's called America Dreaming, America, comma, Dreaming. I released it in three different parts throughout 2019, uh, so via three uh, three song EPs sort of thing. And the album covers some a bit of kind of topics related to my identity as both a Canadian and an American. So although I grew up in Canada, my mom's family is from Ohio, and so I grew up with uh, U.S. citizenship, um, which means that practically I not only have to pay taxes in Canada, but also I'm supposed to file them in the States as well. Um, a little, little did you know. Um, yeah, and so, so the album kind of just, just thematically covers a bit of my perspective on uh, my identity as an American um, and how that shifted over years of, of growing up. Right, right. Is there a personal favorite on there? A personal favorite? Um, that's a Obviously very good question. Obviously, you probably love it. You probably love it all. But. <laughs> yeah, I love it all. It's, it's every song. There's a song called Lonely in America, which I've been uh, particularly enjoying playing as of late. Um, mm-hmm. As I've, I've started performing, so I've, I've, I've been touring through the States uh, more recently where I've haven't done as much of that um and just seeing how people resonate with the song um so either people in the states or people in canada that have spent time in the states um and so that's kind of allowed me to to see the song and kind of um re-engage with it in a different way after having written it and played it and listened to it kind of thousands of times during the recording process and now it's actually it's really cool to be able to see people listen to it for the very first time and, uh, and and get feedback on that just by even looking at their faces. Yeah, absolutely. And going off of that, how have you liked the tour life so far? Because I know you've got, been going around. So, so the first the first kind of two and a half weeks of this tour, um, it, it's it, the whole tour is two months long. Uh, the first two and a half weeks or so were through Ontario in, mm-hmm. in, uh, in Canada uh, with a few dates in Minneapolis and Fargo. Uh, and then now I've jumped down um, across the border once again f- for the last six weeks of the tour. And that's all through the Midwest in October and then the uh, Northeast um, East Coast in November. Oh, that's a busy, busy time, but that's going to be awesome. Um, yeah. is, there, is there a place other than Eau Claire that you're looking forward to the most on this tour? Um, you know what? I, I really like the Midwest, and I really resonate with it. I've, I've been through Eau Claire, just passed through um, before and connected with some, some folks. So I actually really am looking forward to the Eau Claire show. They're really art, artistic-minded people, um, and, and it's cool. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a cool town. Minneapolis, um, I think, is also... Uh, um, a place I'm looking forward to getting to know a little better. Um, the nice part about being a musician and, and touring through all these towns is you get to see it from a perspective different than just being a tourist. So you get kind of a bit of an insider scoop um, for just right. a brief moment in time. And so you get to know the people um, more so than, than you would if you were just kind of driving through or vacationing or something like that. Um, so for me, it's always uh, how... Yeah, just just meeting the people and, and how I resonate with with the people of, of the towns and um, I know the Midwest is very similar in feel, in arts and culture and in um, overall placement as, as the Canadian prairies. Um, so so where I'm from, so there's a lot in common that I can definitely relate to. Well, we're all really looking forward to it. What got you into the folk world? Like, did you have any artists in particular that um, were some big influences on you? Definitely. Yeah, I found it interesting. The more time that I spend in the States and touring in the States, and and as I've kind of been gearing up for this uh, record release, um, I think the definition of the word or of of the genre folk music um, might be different in Canada than in the the States. Um, And perhaps this is just, well, so perhaps this is, my own false perspective um but in, in canada the term folk music i find is a lot more broad more mm-hmm. all-encompassing to cover kind of indie singer songwriter um right, right. americana hasn't really been a thing so much in canada so, so it covers all across the spectrum um i found maybe in the states um i, I performed at a few showcased at a few folk conferences and that it tends to be a little more associated with kind of the 60s 70s american folk music revival a little bit more political 
social justice kind of movement um, and just straight singer songwriter with acoustic guitar. And not that that's far off from what I do so much. Um, <laughs> So as far as what got me into that realm, um, I, I saw a Leonard Cohen concert when I was 19, um, and that inspired me to start writing songs. And so I started writing songs and started performing at open mics where I was living in, in Vancouver, BC, on the west coast of Canada. Um, and then I started performing my own my own stuff, my own sets, and uh, yeah, released an album, went on tour. When did you first start, like, playing gigs? Yeah, that would have been in about second or third year of university, so, like, five, six, maybe five, five, six years ago. It all started for me. I released a six-song EP in 2015, and that was kind of the my introduction into the world of... And going on that, what is your, so far, what is your favorite part of touring and performing live and all of that fun stuff? Yeah, I kind of kind of mentioned it, mm-hmm. um, but ultimately, it ultimately is the... Um, the connect, the connecting with people, and the right, right. Um, just getting a glimpse of what life is like um, in in these towns um, across North America, across Canada, and and the, the bit that I've toured in the states, and you can just see a bit of an insider's perspective and how what people like what people know as truth and what they take for granted is slightly mm-hmm. different from from town to town, even if they are only kind of a state or a province away. Um, it, it, it always interests me of, of how there's a slight difference in communication and in culture and beliefs from town to town. And, and so right. being able to just go into these communities and chat with people and, and see that, um, you know, that diversity, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a cool thing and it's definitely broadened my perspective. Now, that's a really cool point, actually. Like, you can go to two different big cities, but one culture in the big yeah. city might be completely different than the other. For sure. Absolutely. Has there been an artist as of late that have been on yeah. your playlist, personally? That have- um, So, as of as of late, I, I listen to a, a lot of independent singer-songwriters, independent mm-hmm. Canadian music, musicians, and more I kind of spend in the States, too. So, there's actually a, um, an artist from Eau Claire who's done some production work but Shane Leonard is, is oh, his I name. Oh, I love Shane. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so he's, um, yeah. So so he's he's been releasing some music, some new music under his own name, um, right. which I think is fantastic. And then also he produced uh, the new Anna Tivill record, which which I've listened to um, quite a bit as of late. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray Lamontang, Damien Rice, um, Ben Howard. Uh, in that right. kind of acoustic singer songwriter world, listen to a lot of that, and that definitely influenced me. In, in more recent times, um, I think I've listened to more uh, a b- broader range, but more of a bit, bit of a Nashville songwriting style. Um, Chris Stapleton, a uh, guy from Canada named Donovan Woods. Awesome, that's really cool. Okay, I had one last question. Um, is there anything that you want the Converge Radio listeners to know about anything else that's going on in the life of Noah? That's a, that's a very Other than question. you're coming to Eau Claire on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, October 19th. If you want to see a real live Canadian in action, and say the word <laughs> A a lot. Um, yeah, it's the true thing. Canadians, I realized that I spent a bit of time living in Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. and I never thought that I had a Canadian accent until I like, spend time in the States and then I, I catch myself <laughs> saying, I mean, saying a boot, saying all the things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even just being from Minnesota, we don't even have that strong, yeah. uh, or yeah. even Wisconsin people. That, I'm from Minnesota originally, but yeah, even if yeah, I'm yeah. anywhere outside of the Midwest, people like to point it out right away. So I do. Yeah. yeah, so that's, that's kind of all. I got the album released, so the album's released and, and going to be touring through the Midwest and through the States quite a bit more in the, in the coming years. So that's, that's what's going on in my world. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Noah. Yeah. We are so looking forward to seeing you next week. Again, that is Saturday at 7.30 at the Plus in Eau Claire. And I definitely recommend anyone else who's listening to this interview to check out Noah's work and come see him live next Saturday. It's going to be a great performance. Thank you so much, yeah. Noah. Thanks, Christian. And oh, I guess that I should warn you There's no